replicated Redis servers in Docker with authentication enabled and data persistency. That's all we're going to see in this video. If you want to learn more, stick with me. What's up guys, medium guy here. In this video, we're going to see how to make replication for the Redis servers with data persistency, password authentication enabled, and all cool stuff in Docker environment. So this is the part two. If you haven't watched the part one, I'll put the link down below. So if you want, you can give a visit and without any delay, let's get into work. So again, as you can see over here, I've added the second service inside the Docker Compose file. So as we saw in the first video, this is exactly the same configuration for the master Redis server. Only the network section is added in here. So I've tried to add these both instances of the Redis server in the same network so they'll be actually seeing each other through the same network so moving down in here i've got the redis slave which is using the exact same image with the same version and the container name will be slave can be any other values that you want and the port that is exposed outside the container is 6380 so we'll actually make connection to this instance and we'll be actually seeing the data that will be replicated in this instance also so the command that is going to be run inside this container will be redis server i'll pass the redis configuration file where i will define the master authentication and also the dash dash replica of which is available from the redis version 5 and for the previous versions this is the dash dash slave of option so i've defined the host which is the master the name for the first service and the port also for the first service which is running in the default port so actually this instance will be dependent on the first instance and the volumes that it'll have is the redis.com file which we're going to create in a moment which is exactly the configuration file that this instance will be running and reading the master's password from it and next also the network is the exact same network for the first instance so the next thing i'm going to create a file i'll call it redis.conf and inside this i'll only have the master auth option which will be password which is the actual password for the master instance so i'll save it and just pay attention that i haven't mapped any volumes for the second instance so the data of it will not be actually stored and persisted and also for the second instance i haven't used any authentication if you want you can just go ahead and grab the relevant options from the first instance so this is just for test purposes and you can play with the options and configurations that you want for your case so if i just go ahead and switch to the terminal and say docker compose up dash d so this will actually create a network and both my instances so if i say docker compose ps i see both my instances are up and listening on their defined ports so as we saw in the first video i'm going to use the redis extension for vs code and i'll just simply try to create a connection i'll say master as the name i'll choose redis from the server types and i'll leave the host and port as it is and for the password i'll pass in the password that i defined in the docker compose file for the master instance so i'll save this connection and i'll try to actually create another one for the slave instance and i'll just 
change the port and remove the password as it is running in the 6380 port and without any password so again i'll save the connection and over here if i try to open a terminal inside the master redis server i'll try to actually create some data in it so i'll say set a 10 i'll get ok as a result and if i hit refresh button over here i'll see that i now have the a key over here and also if i open the slave hit refresh I see the exact same key is created in the second instance also I'll try to get the value for the A key inside the second instance I'll see 10 as the result and in the first instance if I say set A11 and again I'll hit refresh and try to get its value in the second instance I see I get 11 as the value so whatever i do in the first instance will be replicated in the second instance also so actually i'll try to create a terminal in the slave instance i'll type in info replication and as the result i see the status for the replication inside the second instance and over here i see that the master's host is the exact same host that i passed with the exact same port and the master link status is up so the slave instance has successfully read the password from the redis.com file that we passed when running the container and it is successfully linked to the master instance also like for example if i go ahead and remove the key from the first instance if i hit refresh in the second instance i see that the key is removed just remember in the second instance you won't be able to create or edit or remove any keys so like for example in the second instance if i say set a 10 i get the error saying that read only actually i can't write against a read-only replica so if i hit ls over here i see that a data directory has been created and i'm just going to create a key i'll say set a11 and hit refresh over here just to test the persistency in the terminal i'll say docker compose down and again docker compose up dash d so as I can see, my containers and network gets removed and recreated. And if I hit refresh over here, I see that my data is persisted in the first instance. And if I also hit refresh in the second instance, I see that the second instance gets itself synced with the master instance. And as a result, I get all the same data replicated in both instances without even persisting the data in the slave instance. So that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new in this one. If you have any questions, any recommendations, you can go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below. I'll put all the files and codes and configuration in my GitHub repository, which I'll put the link down below so you'll be able to access them easily just don't forget to watch my other videos on my channel and also subscribe to my channel which will help grow this channel and which will encourage me to create more content which might come useful to some people so don't forget to like and subscribe and with that i hope to see you in the next videos